Using the built-in Unity layout groups, I'm gonna show you how to make a scrolling list like this that's contained within the confines of your image. And you can set this up in just a few minutes. I mean, it's not that exciting, but this is really useful stuff that you'll use in all your projects. All right, so we have this empty Unity project. I'm doing a 2D project, but if you're on 3D, no worries. You can just select this 2D button at the top. Pretty much all UI elements are considered 2D, so it's okay to work in that. And first thing we wanna do is go to our hierarchy and right click and create a new canvas. In Unity, your UI elements won't display without a canvas. Just like painting, you need something to paint on. This is where we're gonna paint our UI elements. I'm gonna leave render mode as screen space overlay, and for UI scale mode, I'll change that to scale with screen size, and I'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 for HD. Let's right click on this canvas and go to UI and create a panel. You'll notice it fills the entire canvas by default. So using this rec tool, or you can also use the hotkey T, I'm just gonna drag the panel in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of making a list background for now. All right, so that's good enough for me. It just gives us a little bit of an area to work within. I'm gonna call this scrollable list. And before we start adding any components, there's two things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna right click on this and go to UI and select button text mesh pro. You can also use the regular button. Text mesh pro just gives you better text options though. And then I'll import text mesh pro's essentials. And I'll select this button. And again, using the rec tool, I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit. So my approach to it is I like to set up the buttons beforehand. You can have the layout group, which we'll eventually use in a second here, uh, determine the width and size of your buttons, but I like to have a little more control over it. So I set it up beforehand. So I'll just have it come in a little bit from the edges. So we have our list and we have our button, nothing else is on them. Let's right click on our list one more time and go to UI. And this time we'll pick an image which is just this white box. Doesn't matter what it looks like. This is going to be what I call the grid content. And why we set it up this way is so that we can scroll later on easily. So first thing we wanna put on this grid content is the content size fitter. So you can go to add component and type content and content size fitter. There's two options, horizontal fit and vertical fit. And for vertical fit, we wanna set this to preferred because we just spent that time to set up this nice button. And I'm also going to change the anchor of this grid content. So I'm gonna click on this box. I'm gonna hold Alt and I'll select this top right one to stretch it. Going back to our button, I'm gonna add component and type in layout element. And there's a couple options here. Basically, there's gonna be a group, right? And the group's gonna have a bunch of settings. But this layout element says this is going to be a part of that group uh, and you can specify individual settings here so i'm gonna for all the buttons toggle preferred height so that we keep the height we set up before and i'll also toggle flexible width because i want it to match the width of whatever this grid element's gonna have and with that we can pretty much just drop our button down onto the grid content on our grid content, we can add our grouping now that I just mentioned. And the reason I wait till the end to add the group is because when you start trying to change the size of the elements in your group, it can kind of be a pain. So if you do it at the end, you can configure it first and then just create a group anyway. So I'll add a component on our grid again, and this time we'll type in vertical layout group. And you'll see it kind of shift around, it's okay. The vertical layout group has a bunch of options here like padding and spacing. Uh, and a couple checked boxes. We wanna uncheck the child force expand because we want the child to have its existing setup that we did before. And I'm gonna change the child alignment from upper left to upper center, just so it's nice and centered. Cool, so what happens now is you can select your button and press Control D to duplicate. And you can actually do this multiple times. And you'll notice that it starts to fill up obviously but it's kind of generating these buttons from the center outward. Whereas I would like this to generate from the top down. In order to do that, let's change the anchor point of our grid content. So I'm gonna click on this and hold Alt, and you'll see the icons change, and I'll click the top center one. And so you'll notice the button moves up, but we're still not done, because if we keep going, now it's just doing the same thing, but higher up. Make sure on grid content in your rec transform component, the pivot has the Y value set to one. That's very important, because now when you start duplicating buttons, you'll notice they go from top down, which is great. This is starting to come together, but there definitely is not a lot of room in between these. So we can go back to our grid content and under vertical layout group, you can kind of play around with the spacing here. So you can actually click to the left of the field and then hold and you can kind of drag and you'll see it starts increasing the value and you can go left and right to increase and decrease. but. I'll just give it a little bit of spacing. That looks a little better. And I'll actually change the background color of this just to like half opacity. So it kind of looks a little more distinguished. Last thing you can kind of do with this vertical layout group is change the padding. So you'll notice it's very tight at the top here. So at the top we could add, I'm not sure, maybe like 20. And I'll do the same thing at the bottom, 20. 
Now when we play the game, we have a vertical list of buttons and we could program each one of these buttons with an on-click function, but it's definitely expanding off the screen. So we want to be able to stop that and then be able to scroll between it, which is our next task. So on the parent to the grid content, the scrollable list, which is our highest level object, we can add a new component of a mask and you'll immediately tell that it starts to cut it off now. We can then add one more component called a scroll rect. And this is what's gonna enable us to be able to scroll through this list. So this is where it's important. Uh, you'll notice the first field it requires is a content rect transform. This is why I set it up with the grid content object being a child. We can just take grid content and drag that in. And so now when we play, we can actually click in the list and drag through, and we can also scroll pretty slowly. Uh, but you'll notice if we click and drag to the sides, it's going all over the place, like horizontally. And we want to restrict that, because we just want to be able to go up and down. This is as easy as going into our scroll rect and unchecking horizontal. I'll also change the movement type to clamped, so it's a little more uniform. And we'll change scroll sensitivity to something like 50. Scroll sensitivity is for your mouse wheel scrolling. So now we can click, and even if I go left and right, it's only moving up and down. And I can scroll with the mouse wheel. But as is, it's kind of hard to tell where you're at in relation to the entire list. So we should add some sort of scroll bar to help indicate that. Outside of our scrollable list because of the mask, let's right click on our canvas and go to UI and select scroll bar. I'll drag it to the side. And if you scroll down, there should be a scroll bar component. There's a direction property. We want to change it from left to right to bottom to top, which might seem counterintuitive, but the directions are actually what's counterintuitive. And then using our rec tools that we've been using this whole time, I'm just gonna drag this out to be the length of the list. And I'll make it a little wide just so we can see what's happening. But that's pretty much it. Then you can just click on your scrollable list and drag in the scroll bar into your vertical scroll bar. And that's it. Now as you scroll, the scroll bar will update and you can also grab this handle and move up and down. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Thank you, Unity. And while this is just using your basic Unity assets, you can definitely spice this up by implementing this with your own UI designs. And I was gonna show you how to set up a horizontal group, but it's basically the same exact thing, just using the horizontal functions and slight tweaks. So I challenge you to give that a try yourself. Thank you very much guys for watching. I hope this helped you out. You should now be able to scroll down through your list. It only takes like a few minutes to set up. Oh my God, I'm sorry guys, I forgot. I forgot I put my YouTube subscribe button in this list. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not a big self-promoting guy. Oh man, and there's also this like the video button. That's a shame, I forgot I put that in there too. And the join the Discord button and comment on my video button.